I'm Shauna Hooks. I'm the IT Operations Support Manager. And before we get started, um, I just wanted to go through just some, just some housekeeping. Um, this presentation will be recorded and will be posted to our website along with all of our other job aids and training material. Um, if you could, please keep your microphones muted. Um, you can keep your cameras on or turn them off. Um, and if you have any questions during the presentation, please just toss those in the chat and we'll get to them. We'll also have some time for question and answers um, at the end of the presentation. This really is going to be an informal uh, presentation. It really is just an overview of some of the basic changes that you may see. And we have a fairly small group, not too big. So please feel free to throw questions out there. If I don't go over something that you would like to see, uh, please let me know and we can jump in the system and take a look at it. But again, this is a pretty informal presentation, shouldn't last very long. And it really is just an overview of some of those small tweaks or changes that you may have noticed um, after the upgrade. So today we'll talk a little bit about accepting tasks, um, saving your drafts, sending and submitting records. We'll also talk a little bit about how you manage your records, just sort of navigating around in them. And then we'll talk a little bit about line items. So again, nothing much has changed with the browsing um, tool that we recommend for you. We continue to recommend that you use Chrome or Firefox. Those seem to give our users the best experience when they're utilizing Oak CI. One of the things that you may have noticed with the upgrade is that you no longer have the ability to sort of toggle back and forth between the old view and the new view. So that new view is, is permanent now to the system. So let's talk a little bit about those basic record functions. What you'll notice now when accepting a new task that comes to you is in the old view, it used to be in that upper left-hand corner of your screen. And what you'll notice now is with the new view, it's now in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. So accepting the task used to be over here on that left side. Now you'll notice that it's up in the right-hand corner. Another change that you may have noticed is in the upper left hand corner of your screen, you used to have the ability to hit that file button and you had a menu of options available to you. That file button is now available to you in the upper right hand corner of your record and any permissions that you have available to you, you're going to find in there. So if in that record you have the ability to add more assignees to the task, um, you'll see that. Um, if you need to carbon copy more users, you'll see that. Just any of those functions that you used to find in the upper left, you'll now find in the upper right within that hamburger. For those of you who like to print your records, you'll notice that that's also in that new hamburger. So prior to the, the upgrade, you could find it in, under file, under print preview. You'll now find it in that hamburger under print. And you can either do that HTML, PDF, or if you're someone who um, needs to create custom prints, you'll find it over there too. And please feel free to ask any questions that you may have. The Oak CI timeout is still the same. It still times out after 60 minutes of inactivity. Um, so any work that you've created may be lost if you don't hit that save button. Um, in the old view, you would find that save button right next to that send button. Um, and now you'll find it still um, next to a send button, but in the upper right hand corner rather than in the upper left hand corner. Let's talk a little bit about moving your record forward to the next step. So previously, you would choose your workflow action first. Then you would come down to your action details. And if, and if the two box wasn't already populated, you would populate the two box. It would tell you who it's going to and why it's going to them. And then you would click your send button in the upper um, corner of your screen. 
Now with the new view, you're actually going to click send first, then choose your workflow action. Um, and then you would have the ability to either, either populate who it goes to next, or you would see that it's already been pre-populated for you. And you will click that send button again. With non-workflow business processes, and those business processes would be things like prevailing wage, a certified payroll, a purchase order, a voucher, any record that doesn't go to an additional step, what you'll find is that um, in the upper left-hand corner where you would simply click finish editing, you would now go to the upper right-hand corner and click submit. Sorry, I just want to make sure I don't have any chats here waiting for me. OK, so let's move on and talk a little bit about the record structure itself, because that definitely has changed significantly uh, for, for us. So what you'll notice is um, in the old view, you actually sort of navigated your record from top to bottom, right? So you had your general tab, and then you can come down to your actions details tab, and then you would come down to any additional tabs. And so it was sort of up to down when you navigated that record. And what you'll find now is you're navigating from left to right. So you'll have your general tab, which you'll complete. Um, then you'll go to the next tab to the right, um, and then any additional tabs that you may find. So instead of navigating top to bottom, you're now navigating left to right. And you'll notice also that it's just a little bit duller. So, you know, you've kind of got this um, white background against a sort of gray background. Um, so that, that is one of the significant changes that we found. And one of the reasons for that is that it becomes a little bit more mobile friendly. So once we start sort of going to the mobile app that you can utilize on your iPhones or Android, um, it just allows for the, the transition. So let's talk a little bit about attachments and comments and all of those things that you used to see at the bottom of your record. So in the old view, you can kind of go along the bottom of your record and you would see your attachments areas or your comments or linked records, any of that information you would find in that lower form. And what you'll find now with the new view is all of that information is in the upper right hand corner. So you'll find your attachments, your comments, everything over here to the right, which is a pretty significant change for us. Um, and so let's talk a little bit about those options. So the first thing we'll talk about is that attachment option. So what you'll see here is in that old view, you could go up to add attachment. You could click that arrow down. In the, in the new view, you're actually going to go to the upper right hand corner of your screen and you're going to click a little paper clip at the bottom. And then I've got another screenshot for you here. So here we click the right hand of the add attachment option in the old view and you've got that my computer or unifier folder, whichever your permissions allowed for. In the new view, when you click on that little paper clip, you're going to see um, browse, which takes you to your desktop or document manager, which will take you to document manager. So a little bit of a change in the terms um, and a little bit of a change in, in where you're going to locate that. Now, once you've attached a document to a record and it goes to the next person in the workflow, what you used to see that next person, they would see down in the bottom in the lower left hand corner, they would see attachments and they would see a parentheses next to those attachments with the number of attachments that they would find. And then they would simply click on that attachments link to open up the attachments. In the new view, what you'll find is that you'll see a little paper clip sitting next to the attachments. That alerts you that you have attachments. And then when you look down into the body, you actually don't have to click on anything yet. You can look down into the body and see all of the attachments that are there. You can also click on the gear icon to the left of that attachment in order to view it or to download it or to do whatever else you may need to do with that attachment. So that definitely is a big difference between the old view and the new view. And some of you, um, if you were already practicing in the new view, may already be aware of it. 
So let's talk a little bit about general comments because this one is a big change. Um, so in the old view, you would come down to the bottom of the record and you would click general comments. You would then click add, you would add your comments and then you would click OK. And then when it got to the next person in the workflow, they would know that there were general comments because there'd be a little talking head sitting there next to the general comments. In the new view, you would actually click on that general comments area. This area in here would open up for you. And here's the big change. In order to ensure that the next person in the workflow is going to see your comment, you actually have to uncheck hide. So in a lot of business processes, um, if the record allows the functionality for someone to hide the comment, the comment is going to be automatically hidden. So that means that off the bat, you're going to want to make sure that when you add that comment, that this box is unchecked. Once you've added your comment, you're going to click that post button and that will save the comment to the record. When the record gets to the next person in the workflow, they'll know that there's a comment because they'll see this little um, comment icon sitting next to the word comment. So that little comment icon took the place of those little sort of talking heads that you used to see that would alert you that there was a comment there. Now, if you get a record and you get a re record returned to you for clarification and you find that there's no comment there, um, one thing that can be done is it can be returned to the to the person who sent it to you and they can unhide the comment. So if you've hit if you accidentally you, for, you forgot to uncheck that box, you kept the box hidden, you moved it to the next person, the next person would actually need to return it back to the person who added the comment so that they can simply unhide the comment. It's very important to ensure that those comments are unhidden because once that record gets to the end step, in order to see any comments in the archives, you've got to make sure that that comment uh, area is unhidden. Any questions about that? I have a quick question on the hidden. Why is the default not to keep it? That's a really good question, um, and we've actually spoken to Oracle about that, and their response to us was that if we enable the record to allow the comment to be hidden, it's going to automatically default to hide. And they don't have a fix for us right now for that, that they consider that sort of an enhancement to the system. Okay, it just seemed odd. If it's a functionality, it would just automatically be unhidden and you could select to hide it. I agree. <laughs> I definitely agree, and we are working on that. Our goal is to get it to default to unhidden and then give you the option to hide it. And that's kind of the way it used to work for us. In the previous system, you actually had to purposely hide it, um, and that's just not the way it works for us now. So we really want to make sure people um, are aware of this change. Any other questions about this? And please, again, this isn't a formal presentation. Um, it really is sort of interactive. So if you've got any questions, just let me know. And hiding, when would, I, I've got a question here, when would hiding be a good idea? Um, sometimes if a record is sent for maybe a consultant response or, um, you know, something like that. They want they want to add an additional annotation to the record, but they don't necessarily want that information available to everyone. Um, they will they you can hide um, the comment. OK, so I'm going to move on to the next. And please feel free to contact me or Matt um, after this presentation if you have any additional questions. Um, online and then another response says, but then couldn't only they see it. That's correct. Um, it doesn't really. I, I don't even know how to real truly address that in a good way. It's 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 not an it's not an awesome feature.
Any other questions on this? I know that's probably not what you want to hear um, for right now until we're able to get them to default to uncheck. Just want to, you know, just make sure that you um, uncheck that box to ensure the next person in the workflow gets to see your see your comments. Will we be able to get a copy of the presentation? Oh yeah, definitely. So we're going to be posting this. We're recording this and we're going to be posting this to our website with all of our other training material. And we can also um, email it to you if you provide us your your email address. And Matt, you'll you'll have a link posted, right? I'm sorry, Matt's probably on mute, but we'll have yeah, a link I, posted for you. I was about to uh, chat the link the link out right now. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about line items. So in the classic view, when you wanted to add a line item to a record, um, you would come down to the lower form to that in this instance, in this example, we're looking at a contract SLB details tab. So I would come down to the contract SLB details tab and um, I would click the uh, add button or I would click the import button and that would open up a secondary screen for me. In the new view, you'll notice that that new details tab is going to be to the right of the general tab. And when you click that, you're going to get a secondary screen with quite a few options available to you. One of those options would be the add option like you see here in the in the old view. And then I would go in and I would choose my WBS codes and such and fill it in as necessary. In the new view, I'm clicking that new tab. I'm clicking the add button. And what you'll notice is I don't get like a secondary screen pop up. I simply get an, an additional screen to the right hand side available to me. And I can still do the same sort of searching for my WBS codes. I can start typing in a WBS code and it'll pull. Sorry about that. I can simply start typing in a WBS code and it'll start pulling up WBS codes that I can choose from or I can click that select button to get the whole group of WBS codes available to me. Um, I would then type in a short description. I would type in my dollar amount, whatever information I need to pull into there. I would click save. Now, one thing you wanna make sure that you're doing is that you're actually clicking the save button or the save and add new button, um, because if you simply just fill it in and then click add again, you're going information that you previously had there. So as soon as you add a line, you just want to make sure that you click the save or the save and add new button um, and that'll allow you to add the next line. Now, generally we don't do that with SOBs. We generally will add lines to, to pay requests, um, you know, one, one by one, but that's the example um, for the contact SOV and adding a line item. And if you're actually importing the spreadsheet, it, functions a lot very similar. So um, previously you would go to the lower form and you would click that import button. And now you're going to click that tab and you're going to go to actions. You would click that arrow down next to actions and then you would click your import button. It's a little different before you would just go right down to the lower form and click import. Now you're going to click that tab to the right, click actions and then click import. Okay, so I've got a question. When downloading the export line item template, it doesn't appear as if there is anywhere to pick up the file. I've tried today and get the file in Excel. Um, Kim, I'm not sure if you're referring to the SOV or the pay request. It would be the pay request. What I try to do every month is look at the um, retainage that's being held, and I can't. Okay to get that information. OK, so let's we, we actually will have sort of a big pay request training in the next couple of weeks, but me and you can actually uh, get together later on today just so that I can figure out exactly what it is you're trying to do. Wonderful. Um, I appreciate it. Sure. Let me just take a note.
Hi, yes, Amy, you're correct. If you if you hit save and try to type a new WBS code, it will change what you had previously, not add an additional WBS. Okay, so you're saying you're trying to save. I, I think what you're saying is you're attempting to save and add new, but you only click save. So, so that's true. You actually want to, if you're going to add additional lines other than the one that you've just added, you've got to add save and add new. If you're only adding one, then you can simply click save. But once you type something in there, the only way to start, start typing fresh information in there is to click save and add new. Thank you, Amy. Any other questions about this? OK, so we'll talk a little bit about submittals. Submittals function about the same, but just look quite a bit different. So before you would fill out your upper form, you would click that submittals list and you would click add. Um, now what you're going to do is you're going to click in general. You'll fill out that form. You'll come to your submittals list tab. You'll then click the arrow down next to add and you can click line item. Once you do that, you're going to get a secondary screen. And before, in that secondary screen, you would have that add attachment option, and then you would choose from either My Computer or Unifier folder based on your permissions. Now, what you'll get is that secondary screen. You'll click that arrow down next to the um, attachment button, and you'll select probably just Document Manager will be available to you. And this will allow you to attach documents much the same way you attached them previously. One thing that you want to make sure that you do with submittals and or design reviews is, and let me go back to one thing that we've found that people have done in the past with records, and I'm sorry, I'm backtracking a little bit, is rather than adding it in that tab, what they're doing is they're adding attachments in the comments area or in the attachments area over here. You actually want to ensure that when you're adding lines to say a submittal that you're actually adding the lines or the attachments in that um, attachment area. In that second tab, not in the first tab. We also wanted to make sure that you're aware that discussion groups, if any of you were using those in the past, are no longer available to us. So we are currently working to see if we can get a workaround on that, but right now discussion groups are no longer available. Um, adding task notes is no longer available. I'm not sure how many of you used to do that, but adding a task note allowed you to add a note to the record that could only be viewed by the next person in the workflow process. So once that next person accepted it, the task note would disappear. And that functionality is actually no longer available with the new view. Also, the spell check feature is no longer available in the new view. And it looks like Susan has a question. You actually already answered it. Okay, sorry, thank you. Of the presentation being um, available. Gotcha, okay. Sorry about that. It's okay. Um, so any other questions, anything that I didn't cover that you want to talk about? Um, one thing that I want to mention is that we're going to have ongoing trainings over the next several months. So um, we've got another training coming up on Thursday going over the application for payment process for the agency higher ed projects. We've got another training for contractor pay request um, coming up next week. Um, and then we'll do a full introduction to OCI for any new users in the system um, in the following weeks. And then we'll have additional trainings, uh, you know, specific to particular business processes, submittals, design reviews, um, things like that. So if you have any ideas, if you have any specific training that you're really looking for, or you just have a small group that you want to get together, please feel free to reach out to us 
and we'd be happy to do so. And please take a look at the trainings that we've got posted at our website. Um, if you see anything out there lacking or you feel like you're, you don't see quite what you're looking for, please let us know and we'll make sure we'll get, we get something out there for you. Hey, Shauna, this is Carrie Johnson from ODOT. Um, are you guys gonna have anything out there for a vouchering of payments? We do have some stuff out there for vouchering of payments um, under the locally administered projects tab. Um, under agency higher ed, there is a training that goes through the entire process of contractor payments um, and uh, I think it's called construction phase training. Let me actually go out to the site for you and we can take a look here. I want to make sure that I'm sharing the right. Okay, so can everyone see um, my new screen? Yes. Matt, can you? Awesome, thank you. So I'm at the OFCC.Ohio.gov website and I'm gonna click on OCI. And you can see within that tab, we've got agency higher ed training, K-12 training and consultantless training. Um, if I click on agency higher ed and I click on locally administered, we have them in a few places. So within the local admin design phase training and local admin construction phase training, there's it actually goes through that whole process for you all the way up until um, the vouchering and the purchase orders. Um, we also have this training here, which is under um, OFCC staff, which is pretty much the same information. Um, create and apply purchase orders, record and apply uh, voucher. And within our K-12, we have the same training. Let's see here if I can find it here. Record purchase order, pay request district approval, pay request district voucher. Um, and then we have some trainings that actually go through the whole process as well. Um, but again, if you go out there and you don't see what you're looking for, please let us know and we'll make sure that it gets updated out there or posted for you. Thank you. Sure Shauna, are, Shauna, are these just like PowerPoints, PDFs, or are they actual audios like what we're doing today? These are, so what we had to do first with the upgrade was update all of the training trainings that are available to you. Um, so that's what we've done. So what you'll notice is previously you used to have a YouTube video and a job aid. Now what you'll notice is you only will see the job aid um, until we get all of the YouTube videos updated. So right now you'll see the job aids and they're actually pretty, let me open one up for you. So they run through the process they talk to you a little bit about the roles and depending on the type of training it is, it's going to be pretty specific to what your need is. So this one is the project coordinator review of a pay request. And so it just sort of walks through the review. Um, the other training, let me go over here. To locally administered and what you'll notice is. All of these links are active. So the bigger trainings that you'll find, you'll actually have active links that will allow you to go directly to the information that you're looking for. So yeah, so right now they are, um, you know, just PowerPoints that walk through the workflow processes themselves. And then with links back to documents or, you know, uh, any other additional information. 
Does that answer your question, Stacy? Yes, thank you. It's sure. much easier to learn as you're showing us. <laughs> yeah, and, and my, so my district treasurers have even said that it's it's easier for these when you're on here and we can ask questions if we have them and stuff, if they're live or if, if it's even a video, you know, what you've taped and then we can go back and hear other people's questions. Those are much more helpful. But, Definitely. And did you guys send out links to like all the school districts and everybody so that like invites to them, actual invites? The, the, the invites went out to all users in OCI. So probably about close to 5,000 people. Okay, but it did it go as like a calendar invite or just an email where you have to put it on your just calendar an, yourself? You have to put it on your calendar yourself because we have outside users. Okay. Um, so it, it's just an it's it was an email invite with a link embedded so that if you click on the link, it'll take you to this training. Okay. Thank you. Sure thing. And again, we'll be running through, so all of these training presentations that you see, um, we will be providing um, training just like this on, and we'll record it, and then we'll post it along with the job aids to replace the old, the old YouTube videos that we, that we previously had. Any other questions? Okay. All right. Well, that's all I have to show you all. We'll be, we will have another training coming up on Thursday. Additional notifications will be going out, going out about that one. Um, we'll also have another training coming next Tuesday and um, throughout the month. So just kind of look out for a question. When will the, when will we be doing pay request training? We will be providing um, application for payment training on Thursday for agency higher ed um, users. We will then be providing an additional training on Tuesday for the contractor pay request slash application for payment for all users, whether they're K-12 or agency higher ed. And a, an, an email notification will be going out shortly on those. Sean, I have gone back through my emails and I am not finding where I was included in that and I think Christine had the same issue because she couldn't find it in her emails either. Um, what um, we found you know what it owed out a lot of ours went into our um, junk email even though we typically get them in our normal email for some reason these ended up in our junk mail we found them there. Okay yeah that's weird that sometimes they go so you don't know to look. Look at my job. Yeah, and Thank that's you. through constant contact. So um, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what prompts them to go to junk and what doesn't. I do know that if you have something that goes to junk and you right click on it and say that it's not junk, it'll start coming back into your inbox again. Uh, yep, here it is. It, it did. <laughs> cool. Went to my junk, I think. Thank you. Sure. Um, new user training. Um, we will be providing an introduction to OCI in the next couple of weeks. Now we do have that posted to our website, um, but again, we will be providing one um, within, within the next couple of weeks and a notification will be going out about that one. Can you show us where to find today's training PDF on the website real quick? Um, today's training PDF, Matt, do you already have it posted? the the actual job aid itself or are you posting the whole thing at once this is over or? uh that this particular slide deck is not on the website right now it's partially the introduction to oak ci and partially one of our update files um i planned on posting them both together um right on the the landing page for our oak ci training at the top for now just so everybody can access it easily okay you're saying up in here Yep, just right on the on the where we have our OCI background and our uh, COVID message at the. So just backslash okay. OCI. OK, so I'm thinking probably what we could do is send out um, back out to everyone 
um, after this training, everyone that we sent this invite to, we can send this as a follow up with a link so they can kind of go directly to yeah, it. Yeah, but we can do that as well. Awesome. Can you touch one minute? Let me see here. Can you touch on how to request additional service as part of the professional services? Um, by that, Christy? OK. All right, well, maybe Christy's not here anymore. She added a. How to modify your current contract. OK, um, so in order to modify your current contract, if you have a professional services agreement, then you would create an amendment. So um, if I go into my agency higher ed training and I click um, user specific, I'm not sure which if you're working with K-12 or agency higher ed, um, and I go to AE, Professional Services, and I click on Create Professional Services Amendment. This is what I would want to do. So what I would do is create an amendment that would um, adjust my current agreement in OCI. So this would be after you've talked to your project manager and everybody else and everyone's come to agreement on what you're going to do. Um, you would log into OCI and follow this process. So I would come into logs, come down to professional services amendments, click create. I would complete that general form and make sure that I've got all of my supporting documentation uploaded into document manager. Um, I would click that little search bar to, to find my current contract to pull that contract in. And I would add all my additional information. So how much the amendments for all that good information. I would then come over to my amendment details tab and add that additional information. And within that tab, I'm going to click the add button and of course. Add all of the amendment. Is, is that is that what you're asking me? Is just the step through of how to do it? OK, so it looks like Amber's going to. OK. Any other questions? OK, all right. Well, thank you all for attending. I really appreciate your time. Um, we will be sending out additional notifications um, throughout the coming weeks. Make sure you're checking your junk. Um, I would, you know, let everybody else know that maybe in your office or, um, you know, just in case they, they don't receive the notifications or they don't realize what they're getting, um, the more the merrier. And if you need any other additional training or any other information, please uh, let us know and, and we'll reach out to you. Thank you all so much for attending and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Shauna. Sure thing. Thank you.